Hello, my name is Richard Jacob. I'm the country manager for Matrix Science. And today we're gonna to look at cross-linking. And the ABRF have just released a new study. Um, this is in the informatics proteomics group. And I've got the webpage open here and you can download it straight from this link. Uh, so I've gone ahead and done that. This is what you receive. And if you look at the letter, it goes through and tells you um, a bit about this particular study, uh, what it provides, the instructions, uh, what you need to do as deliverables and so on. And Matrix Science was very fortunate to be involved in the study. And um, we wrote a tutorial for it which is available here. And I want to expand on that tutorial and um, sort of go through the steps of it just to show you how easy it is to analyze cross-linked data in Mascot. Uh, the tutorial, you know, there's limitations on how much I wanted to write in that tutorial. So um, I cover a lot more information in this video. So first off, uh, looking at the study package, um, we've got a FASTA file. Uh, typically when doing some sort of analysis for cross-linking, you're going to have a couple of protein sequences that may be expressed or um, otherwise modified proteins. Um, it could just be standard proteins in a database and you need to know the accession numbers. Um, but I often keep the background expression system database common contaminants database, the um, cross-link proteins database is all separate. But for this particular study, we're using this um, ABRF provided file, and uh, we want to just use that as is. So let's set that up as a database. We go to the configuration editor, database manager. We want to create a new FASTA file database. But we need to give it a name. I'm going to name it after the study. And I'm going to use a predefined template. Now, I've actually opened up this database and had a look um, in a good text editor like Notepad++ or uh, Ultra Edit, something like that. And the accession numbers aren't consistent through the whole database. Uh, but even so, this simple amino acid uh, template is going to work for our needs. So we don't need to create a custom pass rule or anything like that. We're just going to use the template. So select the template. Let's go next. And create. I'm going to upload the file using the web browser. You can copy it across manually or something like that. So I can browse for the file. It's right here and upload. Activate the database. Mascot is going to uh, compress it and then do a little test search, bringing it online and it's in use. So the next thing when we look at the tutorial is we need to figure a cross-linking method. Now, actually before that step, what we really need to do is run one of the data files at least for a test search to see which proteins are involved in the cross-linking. Go to mascot daemon for that. Okay, let's go to the parameter editor. We want to create new parameters. We're going to search the database, the ABRF one, take away the Swiss prop. Fix modifications, so we've got standard methylation of the cysteines, oxidation of methionine. And I had actually done a, a search previously, and I know there's a fair amount of deamidation. I actually did an error tolerance search on the file um, just to see what the most predominant modifications are. And we're gonna set PPM for the precursor and the fragment to 20. Yeah, you could also go a little lower, 10 ppm or something like that, but I've, I've chosen 20. Instrument type, um, I'm going to choose ESI trap. Mascot is going to search for the right sort of fragments. 
generated by the instrument with that setting. I'm not going to choose a crosslinking method right now. The crosslinking modifications aren't in the standard modifications list. I'm just going to ignore the crosslinking for this point and I'm just going to search for matches and find out what are the most abundant proteins. I've got decoy selected and target uh, false discovery rate at 1%. So let's save those settings. I'm going to save them as ABRF test. In this case, I'm replacing some old ones that I have there. All right. So we have a way of searching the files. Let's add the files. So in the study package, under the phase one, we've got raw and MZML files. I'm going to choose the raw data files. So now we've got the search parameters, the files we want to process. Uh, we need to convert these to a peak list of some kind first. And uh, you can use something like the Proteo Wizard MS Convert. That's a, a free peak picking package. I'm going to use Mascot Distiller. For Mascot Distiller, we need to set the processing options. Uh, it's using the default ones at the moment. This is profile data. So we want to select something um, that will make use of that profile data. Um, when I go, we do have some prof prof settings here, profile profile in MS and MSMS. So that's a good starting point. Now in the uh, folder that was downloaded uh, from the ABRF website, we also include some uh, processing options there under the tutorials mascot. This is the same as the profile profile ones. But instead of using 600 points per Dalton, we're using 200 points per Dalton when we're modeling the peaks. And that just means uh, by lowering the points per Dalton, the raw data is going to be processed a lot faster. And that's something that we're kind of interested in. Um, in my tests, um, we don't want to wait a long time for this sort of peak picking to happen and reducing the uh, points per adult and doesn't affect the results at all. So that's what I would use and we'll say okay and then give this a task name. Okay and at that point I can click run. Now in the interests of speed I've actually created some peak lists already so I'm going to Remove those files, add in the MGF files I previously created. Uh, we only need to search one file. Starting with this MGF file, um, we no longer need to use distiller. So we change the data input filter to none. So we've got search parameters, we've got a peak list, we've got a task name. Let's run. Okay, and the search is completed. Um, if we had used uh, distiller for the peak picking, there'd be a link to the distiller file here, um, but instead we've just got a link straight to the search results. So we can open that up. Mascot server creates a cache file. If we look at the modification and statistics, uh, we can see the number of matches for carbido iodomethylation, oxidation of methionine, and deamidation. Fairly reasonable numbers of queries there. Got the false discovery rate and a number of peptide sequence matches here. Now we can look at the results. So we've got to determine the proteins of interest. So we can see that there's a whole bunch of E. coli proteins here. So this is obviously going to be the background expression system. We've got some single accession numbers, these P numbers here, Swiss prop numbers, and these are going to be from the contaminants database. We've got three proteins, EWAS, one, two, and three. So these are the proteins of interest. Now, in this particular sample, EWAS02 is there in very low amounts. So I'm not going to include that in the actual cross-linking method. 
Um, if this was uh, far higher, then I would include it. But I don't think this is, I think this is a sort of background amount of protein and not what we're actually looking for. Let's go to the configuration editor. And here we can look at the different possible editors and we've got one for cross-linking. So let's select that and add a new cross-linking method. This particular method uses the cross-linking agent DSSO. We can see that listed here, so we don't need to add anything as far as a new cross-linking agent goes. I've just added it for the lysine, and then I've added a second linking agent, and this time for the protein end terminal. We've got to select the types of links that we're looking for. I'll select all three. There's also the monolinks, which correspond to various quenched cross-linking reactions and fragments that relate to the chemistry of the reagents. And from previous searches, I know that we want to select everything except for I, for the lysine cross-linking agent. And for the protein end terminal, we don't see many protein end terminal uh, related crosslinks, and I'm not going to select any of the monolinks for that. The next parameter to add is um, accession numbers. So we have two accession numbers. And if we go to the search, we can see we have EWAS01 and 03. I'm going to paste that in there. Um, we're only searching one database, so I don't need to change anything to that. And that looks pretty good. So now I've got to give the method a name. In mascot, we often leave this xlink colon DSSO in there, so we know um, which crosslinking agent we've used. And that looks good. So we're going to save those changes. Let's go back here. Now, um, there's one other parameter we need to change on the mascot server itself. The cross-linking agents and the monolinks aren't available in the variable modifications directly. And they're encoded as part of the cross-linking method. But one thing we have to think about is how many variable modifications mascot has been set up to use. And the default is nine. Now, if we add up all of those possibilities that we've added, it's going to go over that default limit of nine. So we need to change the default limits here. So under configuration options, what we can do is look for a variable called max variable mods. So I'm just gonna do a search and find and I don't find it. So this means this mascot server is set up to use the default. What I'm gonna do is add a new option. And we have an empty field here, so I'm going to add that particular parameter. I'm gonna increase it from nine to 12 and apply. So that should give me enough room when I do the search um, to account for all the monolinks, the oxidized methionine, and the, the amidation as well. So I've made those changes. After doing that, this cross-linking method is not going to appear in Mascot Daemon. Daemon downloads its methods and configuration information when it starts the graphic user interface. So I'm going to have to close Daemon and then restart it again and the process of doing that will cause Daemon to go back, query the server, and update all of the uh, different configuration information so the new method will be there. There's another change I need to make in Mascot Distiller. So with Mascot Distiller open and without any data file being open, we need to go to Tools, Preferences, and the change I'm going to make here is in the peak list format. And so when 
you're processing the raw file and you're using mascot distiller as a data import filter it's going to use some of these settings what i want to do is make sure that we include the fragment iron charge here because the fragments the crosslink fragments can be quite large it's useful um, if we can calculate it to put the fragment iron charge in the peak list uh, mascot will use that information in the search so i've selected it here yep so we output as m over z for the fragments got the fragment iron charge all right so save those changes so at this point we can take our previous task and clone it and this is set up here so again working with the raw data you'd go mascot distiller options prof prof 200 and in this case we would want to choose all of the raw files here we go now I use the test parameters here for a single search that didn't include cross-linking so I need to create a new method and if I open that test file again and I need to make some changes for this so the first one is to change the cross-linking method from none to the method that we added I've done that and the second change is at the moment we're not able to do a search with cross-linking and decoy at the same time so i have to uncheck the decoy option okay everything else is the same and we're going to save as that method and call it abrf excel i have a previous method there i'm just going to replace it and this will then uh, ping us back to the task editor so now we have abrf uh, cross-linking search parameters change the name of the task to cross-linking and data import filter mascot distiller and processing options and again for reasons of performance during this demonstration I'm going to use the MGF files that I've pre-calculated So data import field are none in this case, MGF files, all the other settings are the same. I'm going to start that running. Okay, back again, and the searches have completed. And we've got a link here, we're just going to look at the first search. If we go to the modifications, uh, we can see a bunch of the monolink matches here and we've got some uh, crosslinks as well only two on the protein end terminal but 123 at the lysine to lysine crosslinks and if we scroll down and expand this second protein family And then look through, we can see the monolinks appearing there. We'll keep going down to the larger peptides. Okay, so here is a cross-linked peptide. Uh, pretty low score, 18. I'm just going to go past that for now then. Also low scores. We've got a variety here. Let's expand uh, the one with the score of 58. Uh, we can see that there is really nothing else that matches that query within the database. Uh, with a mascot search in a database, we always um, we can only find what's in the database um, can't find anything else there's no de novo 
So we've got a very good series of Y irons on uh, both arms of the crosslink, the alpha and the beta chain, and a B iron there. These are the irons that are used for scoring. So what I can do is label all possible matches and we'll just see if it changes at all. In this case, not really. We'll just go back there. So that looks like a pretty reasonable match. Here we've got the measurement tolerances. And you see mostly within plus or minus 10 ppm. Scrolling down, uh, we can see a match there that has an asterisk by it. And this indicates that there's an ambiguity in the peptides that are assigned to that query. And we can see there's four possibilities, all of the same score. And uh, we've got a couple of differences there with uh, deamidation or quenched monolink. Ultimately, it means that the fragmentation pattern wasn't sufficient to allow Mascot to determine which of these possibilities is present. Now, how to validate these crosslinks? Uh, if we go to the public Mascot server and look at the blog section and crosslinking articles and scroll down a little bit, and here we have the validating intact crosslink peptide matches. And this article goes through uh, some methods on how to validate your crosslinks. Now, we're not going to do that right now. Um, instead, we're just going to move on to uh, taking this data and viewing it in a third party viewer. Now, the, one of the reasons why you want to do this is and we have the individual crosslinks identified here, um, but it's not so easy to see. Uh, exactly which lysines on a protein are cross-linked and to where and uh, we could do with a better way of visualizing this and also there's cross-links some with modifications or some with uh, truncated peptides um, or miscleavages and things like that um, so again just sorting all the data out and getting a good sort of map onto the protein sequences is the way to go with mascot we can export to a program called ChiView. We need to export a number of different files. So we're going to export here the ChiView CSV file. We just export, take the default options and export search results. And download them. Let's done that. Go back a couple of pages. Now uh, we need the FASTA file as well. So we'll export that. This has the protein sequences involved. And it's downloaded. And the last file we need is the MGF peak list. So we select that. And we need to change this to mascot query order. So I've done that and then export search results. So that's gonna save these three files. And then we're gonna to go to chai view. And you're gonna to need to uh, create an account if you don't have one. Uh, as I already have one, I'm just gonna sign in. And then um, we're going to upload the data. Choose files. So we've got the set of three files there. And submit. Uh, click on update modifications and then continue. Try view will do its thing and show the crosslinks. So we've got a 
whole bunch here. We've got loop links in red, uh, intra cross links and intra cross links in green, intra cross links in purple. If we click on one of those, the uh, information comes up, including the score. And um, there's no way to filter on an expect score within this software. Uh, so what I tend to do is choose something uh, fairly conservative on the mascot score. And in this case, I'm just going to choose 50. And this is just from having looked at the results in mascot server and evaluated some of those matches. Often there's not a lot of evidence to to cover or there's not enough uh, fragment ions covering the cross-linked area. And so, yes, you've identified some fragments from the alpha and the beta chains, but none of the fragments cover the actual cross-link itself. Um, and I like to see that to be able to confirm the identity. And I found a score of about 50 is working quite well as a, a cutoff or filter to say anything with a score over 50 is a, a, a very good match. So I do that and we reduce the number of links that are displayed. And now when we get them, we see some pretty good links. This has a score 82 there. If I click on that, it will show the peptide. And this is what I mean. We've got B and Y ions and it covers the lysine on this beta chain uh, completely both sides of that lysine so we're pretty sure that this peptide is involved in this crosslink we've got great evidence for it at that point you can then export the results save them and export and prepare your submission to the abrf uh, study so i hope this has been of help to you as a quick tutorial on and, and why we uh, process the data in certain ways and do certain things. There is one more thing that I want to cover and that's if you don't have a local mascot server, you can uh, use the public server. So we can go, this is the public matrix science website. And if we, access the mascot server we can see here uh, we've got a search engine now we can't search directly as a, a guest we have to have a username and password and if you contact us at support at matrixscience.com we will give you that information uh, you can also get a trial version of mascot distiller and process the files in there or use the mgf files that we've uh, pre-processed so let's log in and then I'll show you the search. I've logged in and if we go to the search form now, uh, we can see that we've got the database available and we've got all the other modifications on the cross-linking methods. We have a suitable method here. Um, and then it's just a case of setting standard search parameters, precursor, fragment ion tolerances, any modifications you want to include, et cetera, et cetera. Um, don't select decoy when doing the cross-linking search. And that's pretty much it for that. If we look at mascot distiller directly, you can take a demo version and when you install the server, you'll see that it's already pointing towards the matrix science website. And if you get a username and password from us uh, to be able to search it with these larger data sets, you would enter that here. And when you save the settings, mascot distiller will be ready to search against the public mascot server. So if I open a raw data file and we say, new project thermo Excalibur and we're in the study data phase one project already take one of these files open it 
Now the file is open. Uh, we want to edit the processing options and load the ones that came with the tutorial. There we go. And at that point you would process and search. Uh, it's gonna come in, ask you for the search parameters. We take the database of interest, cross-linking method, any fixed or variable modifications. And set up the tolerances. We don't need to specify anything on a data file. Um, set up the instrument, ESI track, and choose decoy. Now, I've on this mascot to sit, I've already set the peak list format to include the fragment iron charge state. Um, so I'm not showing that again, uh, but that's something that you want to do. Uh, once you go ahead and click search, distiller will process the raw data and create a peak list. So it'll do the peak picking and then it will submit the search to whichever mascot server you've configured for the system so the public server or your local server and uh, when it's completed that you can then save the project um, which means you can go back and review the results um, overlaid on the raw data if you want to okay so i've shown how to process the data using mascot daemon and your local server, um, how to submit a peak list directly to the public server, and uh, how to use mascot distiller to process a peak list and submit it either to your local server or the public server. If you have any questions about any of this, uh, please contact support at Matrix Science. If you need a login, username and password for the public server, again, just contact us, uh, it's no problem. And uh, good luck with the study. Thank you. Bye.